Oh, he's down. Oh, Lord. How oh, marvelous is thy name. How oh, marvelous is thy name. How oh, marvelous is thy name. Oh, Lord. How oh, glorious. How oh, glorious is thy name. Oh, Lord. How glorious is thy name, O Lord. How glorious is thy name. How glorious is thy name. How glorious is thy name, O Lord. How glorious is thy name. How glorious is thy name. How glorious is thy name, O oh Lord, how glorious, beautiful is thy name, O oh Lord, how beautiful is thy name, O oh Lord, how beautiful is thy name, how beautiful is thy name. How beautiful is thy name, O oh Lord. How beautiful is thy name. How beautiful is thy name. How beautiful is thy name, O oh Lord. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We thank you for this new week. Our week of crossover. Our week of crossover from darkness unto light. Our week of crossover from lack into abundance. Thank you, Father, for I didn't catch that. New Could you week. try again? In Jesus. I Here's what I you. found. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be thy name, hallelujah. Blessed be thy name, hallelujah. Blessed be thy name of the Lord. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. I welcome you to the feet of Araboni this morning. With this topic, vigilante, that sister from South Africa, Sister Esther Roots, unmute yourself. And follow me to the book of Psalm 121. Daughter of Yahweh, are you in Psalm 121? Yes, sir. Just the first four verses, verse 1 to 4. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. 
You will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Thank you. The one who watches over a star root will neither sleep nor slumber. In Jesus' mighty name. The keeper of Israel, he will never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me day and night. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel, he will never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. He's watching over us day and night. He's watching over us. The keeper of Israel. He will never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over us. He's watching over us day and night. He's watching over us. He's watching over you. He's watching over you day and night. He's watching over you. He that keepeth Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. We have known God by different dimensions. Many of us are still in slumber. We have not known God as a vigilante. Holy Spirit, wake up your children to the truth of this message this Sunday morning. God is a vigilante. We have walked within the system. The system favored some. The system did not favor some. I don't know what system you are working within now. In this week of crossover, we will begin to experience the vigilante dimension of God in our lives. A vigilante is somebody that works extra lega outside of the normal system. I don't know whether the current system, whether of government, whether of finance, whether of whatever, favors you. If you have complaint against your current state, You need the vigilante power of God. Before I go further, let me show you. A vigilante is a person that inflicts punishment because of an injury or offense committed. And when he inflicts that punishment, he does it outside of the system. A vigilante is a person that practices and undertakes public safety and retributive justice without commission. Nobody commissioned him. 
there is no one greater than God. So nobody needs to commission God. Exercising retributive justice without waiting for commission, without waiting to be sent. You do it outside of the system. You circumvent the system. If it is the system that is working against you. God is a God of system. He's a God of process. But any time processes is contaminated, polluted, compromised, even though he's the God of process, he circumvents process in order to establish his will. Is a God of righteousness. Righteousness is supposed to be channeled through his system. Have you ever heard testimony of a situation where a person did not pray and God answered? You think it is prayers that brings answer? At times, somebody just wished something in his heart. He has not verbalized it. He has not started to pray. He said, before they pray, I will answer. Why they are yet speaking, I will manifest. I will appear. That's a vigilante testimony. I welcome you to this crossover week of vigilante testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not done. I'm giving you the different definitions of a vigilante. The word vigilante is a Spanish word. And it means to watch. May God wake up your spiritual antenna. The word vigilante is a borrowed Spanish word, which means watcher. That scripture that Sister Esther Ruth read for us from South Africa in the book of Psalm 121, verse 4, emphasizes a character of God that many Christians have not tapped into. He that keepeth Israel does not sleep nor slumber. Do you know why? Because he has given you the gift of sleep. Hallelujah. Psalm 127 verse 2. Sister Josephine from America, unmute yourself. Good morning, sir. Daughter of the Most High, the Lord bless you mightily. Thank you, sir. Are you in Psalm 127? Okay, let me go there. Psalm 127. Which verse, sir? Verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Amen. I call that verse Bojiojimi in my native language. To wake up early. And you don't go back to bed until late. But with all the early waking and coming back home late, 
all that person does is to hit the bread of sorrow. The salary you collect, you call it take home. It couldn't take you home. That salary could not, that take home could not take you home. So whatever income you earn that has become grossly insufficient for you has become a bread of sorrow. And so he gave it his beloved sleep. He, he, he neither sleeps nor slumber because he has already given you the capacity. It's a gift. Sleep is a gift. The one who gave you sleep, he gave that his beloved sleep. The one who gave you sleep does not sleep nor slumber. Hello, people of God, have you reasoned that scripture the way I am reasoning it? He gave you sleep. Both of you cannot sleep at the same time. If God should wink one minute, the whole world will be in chaos. He has given you sleep already. He can go to sleep because of you. So it's because of me that God does not sleep. He that keepeth his trail. It means if God goes to sleep for one second, his trail will be endangered. And who is his trail? We. The children of Jacob, Abraham, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we had the history. So I'm not limiting it to the nation, geographical nation called Israel. Every covenant child of God is Israel. He that keepeth me, Israel, does not sleep nor slumber so that I can have sweet sleep. Is a vigilante God. Vigilant means to be alert, to be watchful. He's watching over us. Why does God watch over us? So that he can take action with respect to our life. I was talking about Joseph Point last week and I said many of us were praying amiss. God does not watch over us and fold his hands. He watches over us in order to take action concerning us. Many places in scripture we see where God was saying, awake, awake, two times. He spoke to Deborah, awake, awake. He spoke to Jerusalem, awake, awake. Twice he used that word, awake, awake. He's the one that gave us sleep. But he didn't ask us to sleep 24 hours of the day. There is a time to sleep. There is a time to be awake. When you are sleeping at the time when you should be awake, God will stir you up. What is the power in this mystery of vigilante? Because many of us have never even used it in prayer. He that keepeth history does not sleep, no slumber. If God is awake and keeping a vigil because of this small me, ha, it's time to draw his power into my situation. The keeper of Israel, he will never sleep nor slumber. Is watching over me. Is watching over me. Day and night. Is watching over me. 
the keeper of Israel. He will never sleep no slumber. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. Day and night. He's watching over me. He does not sleep no slumber because he's awake to watch over me. And he does not watch over me for the sake of watching. He watches over me to take action when I push his button. He will never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. Day and night. He's watching. He's the keeper of history. Matuke bose kete kaibari basa. That scripture that our daughter from South Africa read. Let me read the version. HSCB. HCSB version. My son, if you are put up security for your neighbor, Mirabusiki, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. That verse 4 is tied to verse 2. He does not watch over us for this. He watches us to watches over us to help us. My help come from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth me will not slumber. Why? Because he has to help me. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. I will look unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh not from the hills. My help cometh not from the mountains. It cometh from the Lord God who made the heaven, the hills, and the mountains, and the earth. Tie the two together. My help cometh from the Lord because he keepeth me and watches over me. He is awake in order to help me. If I have not seen his help, it is because I have not pressed the right button. Look at verse 2, verse 3, and verse 4. They are connected. The ultimate of God keeping you he said, it will not suffer thy foot to be moved. That is, it will not allow you to be demoted. It will not allow you to be cast aside. It will not allow you to be overthrown. It will not suffer thy foot to be moved. If your foot shall move, it shall move by the dictates of God, not by the pleasure of any man. It will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will plant your feet and establish your standing. The keeper of Israel, he will never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. He's watching over me day and night. He's watching over me. My before I go further, I just want to 
quickly run through a few scriptures. We don't have that kind of pleasure to call everybody to read these scriptures. But please take note of this scripture for your own meditation later. Judges chapter 5 verse 12. The book of Judges chapter 5 verse 12. Awake, awake. That word awake to keep vigil was mentioned twice. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, hotter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoham. What is that captivity in your life now? What is that captivity in your life currently? Capti captivity means inactivity. Oh, there are many hyperactivities too that leads to captivity. But you can capture your captivity like Deborah. And Barak. Lead thy captivity captive. Those who sleep can do that. He created us in his image. After his likeness, he now limited us by putting us inside flesh. We are first and foremost spirit with a soul living inside a body of flesh and blood. You are a spirit. God is a spirit. But because of this flesh and blood, you get tired. Spirits are never tired. I've seen Christians making negative mistake, confused mistake. A wrong mistake. Oh, my spirit is tired. Spirits are spirits. Spirits don't sleep. Yaka, yaka. is the body of flesh and blood that goes to sleep. The day we escape from this limitation called flesh and blood body, no more sleep. Because he created us in his image after his likeness. God is a spirit and we too, we are spirits, but limited by the body of flesh and blood where we are living in. The day we escape from this body, body every sleep ends. But while we are still in this body, God regularly urges us to be awake Awake. Isaiah 51 verse 9. Don't mind me when I pour finish all the scripture, I will continue with the message. Isaiah 51 verse 9. Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O arm of the Lord. There is strength in vigilance. Put on your strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old, are thou not it that had caught Rahab and wounded the dragon? That dragon that is bragging over your destiny is because you are sleeping. The day you wake up from your spiritual slumber and carry the sword of the spirit in your mouth, you cut that dragon to pieces. If I were you, 
at the mention of that scripture of Isaiah 51 9, I will rise up and turn it into prayer. Every dragon of failure, I don't know which your own is. Is he a dragon of sicknesses and infirmity? Is he a dragon of poverty that has kept you down? Yes, it could be a dragon of unemployment. Is he a dragon of disgrace and disrepute? Only you know what dragon has been bragging against you. And I said it's because of your spiritual slumber. The day you wake up from spiritual slumber and take the sword of the spirit. Because Isaiah used his sword. So he said, are you not the one that cut Rahab into pieces? Are you ready? You, the dragon of failure and infirmity, bragging over any area of my life. I cut you to pieces by the sword of the Spirit in the name of Jesus, by the sword of the vigilante, In Jesus' mighty name, every dragon of poverty, messing up my finances, I awake now by the sword of the vigilante and cut the dragon of poverty to pieces. In Jesus' mighty name, dragon of stagnation. I don't know which one is your own. I'm just giving you sample prayer points. You, the dragon of stagnation, decimating my destiny, I awake and arise against you by the sword of the divine vigilante. I awake and arise against you by the sword of divine vigilante. Cut you to pieces. Cut you to pieces. Cut, 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 cut you to pieces. You, the dragon of stagnation. I cut you to pieces. Dragon of delay. Dragon of delay. Bragging against my progress. Slowing down the speed of my divine accomplishment, I awake and arise against thee by the sword of the vigilante. Vigilante means to keep awake, to keep vigil. You punish every delay by the sword of the because a vigilante is a punisher. A vigilante executes punishment. Against every sin, every offense, every injury. So the vigilante has a sword. And God is a vigilante. Every time you mention vigilante, you are talking of how to circumvent every system that is against you. Stagnation is a system. Poverty is a system. So God can circumvent them in order to get to you, to get your miracle to you. So it's a, it's a week of crossover. Inside this week, one month hence, another new month starts. That's why I call it a crossover week. Sometime this week, we are crossing over to the month of June. So what do you do before you get to do? Do battle at the gates. You do battle at the gates. Awake, 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 all sword of the vigilante. For my sake, awake and cut every dragon of stagnation to pieces. Cut them to pieces. Every dragon of failure and poverty and sicknesses, infirmity, 
awake, O sword of the vigilante, cut them to pieces. Cut, 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 cut them to pieces in Jesus' mighty name. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Wake, wake. If scripture, and it's not tautology, repeats the word awake, every time God repeats the same word twice or more, it means there is an urgency that needs our attention. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Jerusalem. Maki, maki, pukusikiti katayeda. There is no strength in slumber. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment, O Jerusalem. The holy city, for henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. For from henceforth, there shall no more come into thee poverty and sicknesses. From henceforth, if you can awake to this point, it's a call to come alive. We have been sleeping in prayer. God wants us to keep a vigil. He's a vigilante God. The one that keepeth Israel does not sleep. So that Israel can sleep and quickly wake up to deal with every adversary and adversities of life. Put on thy beautiful garment. I'm telling you the characteristic things that is associated, that are associated with wakefulness. When you are in slumber, you are in poverty. When you are in slumber, you are in sickness and infirmity. Did you see what Isaiah said there? He said, wake up and put on that beautiful garment. Wake up and put up thy strength. So when you are in slumber, you are weak. When you are in slumber, you are dead. It's cheap to commit sin when you are in spiritual slumber. Because your spiritual eyes are blind, you will be stumbling and falling into sin. Awake, put on thy strength. There is no weakness in being awake. Awake, put on thy strength. Awake, put on thy beautiful garments. So those who are in those who are in slumber don't have beautiful garments. May God beautify your destiny. As you obey this call to be awake in Jesus' mighty name. If I were you, I would turn that scripture to prayer. You will, you will call your destiny three times. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny. You will call your destiny three times. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny. Awake, 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 awake and put on your strength. Awake and put on your success. Awake and put on your beautiful garment of glory in Jesus' mighty name. Awake, 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 awake in Jesus' mighty name. Oh my God, we have spent 41 hours, 41 minutes. It looked like five minutes ago we just started this service. And I've not started. 
I'm just quoting scripture. I've not even preached. My destiny. I hope people are getting this truth. God mentioned awake twice. Not in one or two scriptures. In many scriptures. Why? Is there is an urgency and fervency attached to that call. Awake, awake, awake. Put on your beautiful garment of glory. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny. Awake, awake. Put on your beautiful garments of glory. Put on your beautiful garment of success. Put on your beautiful garment of sound health. Put on your beautiful garment of promotion. Put on your beautiful garment of breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. Awake, 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 awake my destiny in Jesus' mighty name. I've just interpreted Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1 for you. I interpreted it in prayer. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, anything you don't want to happen henceforth in your life, begin to mention them. For henceforth, poverty will not tie you down again. For henceforth, sickness will not demolish you again. From henceforth, unemployment will have no power over you again. Only you know what you want to happen from henceforth. But the sword of the spirit is in your mouth. Bring out that sword by declaration. It will go forth and not return void unto you until it accomplish what you have declared. From henceforth, poverty will no longer tie you down. From henceforth, sicknesses and infirmity will no longer tie you down. Awake, awake, awake. Put on your beautiful garment of glory. In Jesus' mighty name. This is one of my favorite scriptures when I became born again. Psalm 57, that's it. Psalm 57, that's it. Wake up. Awake up my glory. Awake subtly and harm and harp. I myself will awake early. I myself will awake early. So glory can sleep. Awake up my glory. When your glory sleep, there is no testimony. You don't shine with testimonies. There is no testimony to point to because your glory is sleeping. Even though you are walking about, even though you, like uh, that Psalm 121 we just read. He said people were hitting the bread of sorrow, not because they were unemployed. They hate the bread of sorrow because they wake up so early. And come back late. So they were walking. They were walking without space for fellowship with God. They were walking without koinonia, fellowship with God. Wake up early. One of my daughters who came for counseling last week was telling me a drama of stagnation. She told me her son. How can a, a son, a young child, notice that for the past two years, the family has not bought any new thing? No new cars. Well, that one is a, a car is not something you buy every day. But clothes is what we wear every day. You mean in two years, some people cannot even, the grinding poverty cannot even make them to say, okay, I want to change my wardrobe. A young boy was telling the mother that mom, for the past two years, we have not bought any new dress. Nothing. Except just to manage to hit. No new clothes, no new shoes. In two years, and you said that is not stagnation now. If a young boy can recognize that, do you know what that one means? There was Easter holiday, there was Christmas. You mean they have passed through 
two Christmas season. Even if you don't buy anything throughout the year, as soon as Christmas is coming, there is festivity in the atmosphere. And you plug into that atmosphere. It's a season of buying and spending. You mean throughout that season, you didn't even buy one shirt, one blouse, one skirt, one shoe for yourself. He said, mom, a young child was asking the mommy, for the past two years, mom, we have not bought a single clothes. Two years. If a tiny, small child can recognize stagnation, what about you, the mother? It didn't mean you were sleeping. You were walking about, but your glory was sleeping. So that's why God gave me that one at the onset of my faith. Psalm 57 verse 8. Awake hope, awake my glory, awake satri and have I myself. When your glory sleeps, you don't buy new things. Because sleep is sleep. May that sleep not lead on to death. So the time to reverse that one. And when you wake people up, when you use your, their name to call them and they didn't wake, what do you do? You begin to touch them and hit them. So some people need to pray some prayer by hitting their head. I didn't say you should use hammer on your head. What I mean is, you begin to slap your head like this. Awake, awake. My glory, my glory, my glory. Awake, 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 awake. And put on your strength. Shine forth this season in the name of Jesus. So glory can sleep according to Psalm 57 verse 8. So the psalmist had to wake up his glory. For two years, that family, their glory was sleeping. And a tiny boy in the family noticed and told the mommy, Mommy, we have not bought any new thing in the last two years. And did you know what? That boy tied that lack of testimony to the new location they found themselves. Because they moved to that new location some two years ago. So the boy said, Mommy, we have not bought any new things since we moved here two years ago. There are past two Christmas, two Easter holidays. You can't celebrate. Happy New Year. Yes, you say Happy New Year with anybody. But there is no new clothes, no new life. You shouted and greeted people, Happy New Year, but there is no new thing in your life. If truly the year is new, the mercies of God are new every morning. Why are you stagnating? It's time to bring out the sword of the spirit and cut that dragon of stagnation to pieces. The opposite of glory is shame. Cut the dragon of shame. The dragon of stagnation. Cut them to pieces. And command your glory to come alive. Awake, 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 awake. My glory, my glory, my glory. Awake, 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 awake. Awake and put on thy strengths. In Jesus' mighty name. Enough of this infirmity and weaknesses. My glory, wake up and put on your strength. Wake up and put on your beautiful garments of breaking. Awake, 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 awake in Jesus' mighty name. 50 minutes has gone. May God help us in the next 10 minutes to hit. We have not hit the targets. We are still quoting scriptures and we are still praying. Romans chapter 13. Sister Beula, unmute yourself. Morning, Teddy. The Lord bless you. Which country are you from, daughter of Yahweh? South Africa. South Africa. Uh, we are having so many South African people today. The Lord bless you mightily. Amen. Romans chapter 13. 
And Romans 13? Verse 11 to 12. Amen. Reading from the NIV. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Amen. Amen and amen. You are a kind of light, Sister Bella. Amen. From this day. Every dragon of darkness that has held you down, the shining hammer of light, we cut them to pieces in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are a child of light. Darkness cannot overcome you. For light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. I release the power of light into your life to shatter every negative darkness around you to shatter every darkness that is holding you down in Jesus mighty name Amen. the source of every stagnation is darkness it happened to our brothers in Egypt he said there was a thick darkness nobody could move a darkness that could not allow people to move can you imagine that's no longer darkness it is deep da thick darkness people could not rise so, I don't know how long, Sister Beola, that darkness has held you down. But by revelation, I am telling you, your light is come. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, your light is come. Thank you, Father. Awake and put on the hammer of light. The night is past gone. The day, the shining day star is here. Enough of every tradition. Welcome to your season of light. May this sword of light cut to pieces every thick darkness holding down your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Quickly follow me to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 14 to 16. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 14 to 15. Makudebo se kete kaya barada. Ephesians chapter 5. Sister Joyce. Unmute yourself. Ephesians chapter 5. Sister Joyce, if Sister Joyce is not available. Yes, sir. Good morning, Daddy. The Lord bless you, mightily, daughter of the Most High. Which country are you from? I'm in South Africa, Daddy. Oh, may God bless. I don't know why God is emphasizing South Africa this morning. But every South African present on this altar this morning, your season of turn around by light is come. Your Amen. season of vigilante is come. God will circumvent Amen. the system to bless you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you in Ephesians chapter 5? Yes, Daddy, I'm in Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 14 to 16. Okay, sir. Um, Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16, I read. This is my way. It, it is said, wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Amen. Thank you, Doctor. The Lord bless you mightily. The strongest Amen. force 
that dismember and decimate any evil, particularly we are in the days of evil all over the world, is to be vigilant. And to be vigilant means you have the light. This day, I release the power of light into your life. Every Amen. darkness of delay, every evil darkness surrounding any area of your life, of your family, of your children, I command them to be consumed by this light in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. Let the power Amen. of light shatter every thick darkness around your life in Jesus' mighty name. And I speak unto your destiny. Awake, 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 awake in Jesus' mighty name, awake. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, sir. The Lord bless you, dollar, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the days of evil, what you need is light. Evil is darkness. But light and consume that darkness can destroy the power of darkness. Awake, be vigilant. This day, I put into your hands the sword of the vigilante. God is the vigilante of heaven. I say this day, I put in your hand the vigilante sword from heaven to cut every slumber, every darkness, every slumber of darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. I'm preparing you for crossover because the crossover season is loaded. And we are not going to play with it. This crossover season, by God's special grace upon my life, we are releasing gems and treasure that destroy stagnation in every life. Father, I thank you. I want you to quickly break your bread into seven pieces and prepare the drink. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, every broken pieces of bread under the sound of my voice, I decree by light that be converted, be converted be converted into the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every drink under the sound of my voice be converted into the precious blood of Jesus. Be converted into the precious blood of Jesus. I christen this table the table of the divine vigilante. The table of the divine vigilante. As we partake of this table of divine vigilante, we receive the sword of light to cut off to pieces every thick darkness enveloping any area of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. This crossover week, receive a new week, a new name. They will look at you. They will say, awake. He said, no, my name is so, so, so. He said, but I, what I see is not your whole name. What I see now is a new name. Awake, awake, awake. Because the sword of vigilante, we cut every bed of slumber to pieces. Let me give you a final scripture before we round up so that you can understand the realm from where I am speaking from. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. 
ma ye ki bosu kete ya buruda. If your name is Dunigan, unmute yourself. Proverbs chapter 20. Good morning, sir. Is that the voice of a woman or a man? The Lord bless you mightily, daughter of Yahweh. Which country are you from? Hallelujah. At least we have many South Africa, but thank God we have two people from, from America now. Are you in Proverbs chapter 20? Yes, sir, I am. Please, verse 13. It says, love not sleep. Least thou come to poverty. Open thy eye, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Amen. Amen. And amen. It's those who are asleep that are hungry. He said, open thy eyes so that you can be satisfied with bread. If you close your eyes in slumber, you can't see the bread of breakthrough. I decree this new week, as you partake of the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood, I welcome you into a new week of the bread of breakthroughs. Open thy eyes that ye may be satisfied with bread. May this table of the divine vigilante open your eyes of understanding and magnetize the bread of destiny breakthroughs to you in Jesus' mighty name. But that's not where I'm going. He said, love not sleep. How can the God that gave us sweet sleep Begin to warn us in Proverbs never to love sleep. Sleep is sweet. And anything that is sweet, human beings tend to love sweetness. Human beings hate bitterness. And the sleep God gave every believer, he said, so he giveth his beloved sleep from Psalm 127 we read before. The same God is now warning you, love not sleep. The day God opened my eyes of understanding to catch that revelation from Proverbs 20, 13. Oh, Basa, opposite of love is it. It means we should not be excessively indulged in sleep because sleep makes your eyes to close and you won't see the things you ought to see. It's a time of divine opportunity. Don't let us cross over into the second half of the year, still managing any stagnation you have faced in the last five or six months. Love not sleep. That is, there is a kind of sleep you must eat. Kaba, kaba, abu so kete kaya. He's the one that gave us sweet sleep. And so he gave it his beloved sleep. The same one is telling and warning us now. Love not sleep. That is, don't be excessively in, indulged. Don't indulge this. If this body wants, it doesn't want to work at all. You want to continually and perpetually be in slumber. So you need to stir up yourself. Turn around and awake, awake, awake. Love, not sleep. So that you can be satisfied with bread when your eyes are opened and you are awake. Love not. He didn't say we shouldn't sleep. He is the one that gave us the sleep. He is the one that put sleep inside the flesh. The flesh and blood of man is limited. Spirits don't sleep. God neither sleeps nor slumber. But as long as we are in this body of flesh, we are bound to sleep. Enjoy it. It is sweet. But don't those who indulge in the excesses of the body called sleep. They come to poverty. He said, love, love not sleep so that you will not come to poverty. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands. So shall thy poverty come like an arm robber. That shall be not, not be your portion. So it's time to walk against excessive sleep. Love 
not that is there is a sleep you must hate the one that is over in dodged sleep because when you are asleep your eyes are closed and when your eyes are closed you can't see he said open thy eyes that you may see and satisfy your life your your life with bread so if i were you i will turn that one too into prayer every bread of opportunity because it's an opportunity that's what that scripture says every bread of opportunity assigned for my destiny in this new week every bread of opportunity assigned for my destiny i will see you i will grab you i will not miss you it's a three in one prayer i will see you i will grab you i will not miss you he said open thy eyes that thy soul may be satisfied with bread you can't be sleeping and be opening your eyes Open thy eyes, awake, 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 awake. Love not sleep. So this is a season of the bread of opportunity. If you don't see it, you can't grab it. If you don't grab it, it means you have missed it. So you will pray that prayer again. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny. Awake, awake. Awake, grab the bread of breakthrough. Grab the bread of opportunity. Don't miss it in the name of Jesus. In this new week, my destiny, awake, awake, awake. See the bread of opportunity. Grab the bread of opportunity. Don't miss the bread of breakthrough in Jesus mighty name awake 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 in Jesus mighty name my father my father my father this is another prayer inject me with your divine coffee Coffee, people drink coffee for taste, for aroma, for pleasure. But coffee has a property. That's why in order for that property, that significant property of coffee not to have effect, they have to decaffeinate coffee. So it's decaf you see all around. But the coffee that is not decaffeinated, if God should inject you with his divine coffee, you will be awake to see the bread of opportunity, grab it, and never miss it. And this is going to happen this week. Starting from today, seven days to the end of Saturday, God is going to be showering the bread of opportunity upon this altar. I pray sincerely for you from the bottom of my heart, that you will see this bread of opportunity. You will grab this bread of opportunity and you will not miss it in Jesus' mighty name. But to be sure that you won't miss it, I didn't say go and drink coffee. I said you should pray that God should inject you with this divine coffee. God should inject into your blood, into your bloodstream, is divine coffee to keep you alert, to keep you vigilant, to keep you awake so that your eyes can see the bread of opportunity. Your hands can grab that bread of opportunity and your destiny will not miss the pleasure that that bread of breakthrough is bringing into your life. In Jesus' mighty name. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny. Awake, 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 awake. 
be injected with divine coffee. See the bread of opportunity God is showering from heaven this week. He did it for them. When there was no bread, bread began to fall like rain. Only upon the camp. So, the bread of opportunity, and I've taught you this one, the word opportune and fortune, if you grab opportunity, it will take you into fortune. Oppor to be opportunate is to be fortunate. So, there is a buried fortune in this new week, crossover week. And the reign of opportunity will come. But you can't get it unless you are importunate. You know what importunacy means to be fathomed. So you need importunate prayers with revelation in this new crossover week to see that bread of opportunity, grab that bread of opportunity and enjoy that bread of opportunity. Your life will not miss it in Jesus' mighty name. So you will pray importunate prayers, sweating, Awake, awake, awake. My destiny, my destiny, my destiny. Be injected with the divine coffee of God. Be awake, be vigilant. To see the bread of opportunity. Grab the bread of opportunity. Enjoy the bread of opportunity. And never miss the bread of opportunity. Showering from heaven again. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. What you have sent me. I have given to your children. This new week is a week of crossover. And the bread of opportunity shall come by importunate prayers. And this opportunity will lead to fortune. Every misfortune in any area of your children, my Father and my God, let the abundance of your bread of vigilante your bread of opportunity, wipe them out of the life of your children. Misfortune, wipe that way. Sword of the vigilante, cut every dragon of misfortune in your life. In the name of Jesus, you, the sword of the vigilante, divine vigilante, I receive you now in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, and I cut to pieces every dragon of misfortune. I cut them to pieces. I Cut them to pieces in the name of Jesus. Every dragon of misfortune besieging any area of my life. I receive the sword of the divine vigilante this new week. And I cut the dragon of misfortune to pieces. Cut, 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 cut. Cut them to pieces in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Receive our praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this season. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace in fellowship. We have spent 14 minutes extra after one hour. It is well. It is a bonus God gave us. Assemble, listen to this message again and again. Assemble the prayer points. Assemble those scriptures. And use it to bring your whole sword of the vigilante out. And use it to cut whatever dragon is bragging against your life. Your testimony of fortune that will smile upon you, upon your life, shall manifest this new week. In Jesus' mighty name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Seven divine vigilante, hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Peace unto you in Jesus. Mighty name. Amen.